subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chonzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday the 19th of October. Indian Army chief reviews preparedness along border in Jammu and Kashmir. US envoy to Afghanistan Khalil Zad resigns in wake of chaotic withdrawal replaced by Tom West. And Bangladesh arrest hundreds for violence against Hindus thousands protest in India. And now for all the details. Indian Army Chief General M M Narawne on Tuesday reviewed the preparedness as he visited forward areas along the de facto border in northern Jammu and Kashmir following a spate in terror activities in the Union territory in recent days. Meanwhile, the army has also increased surveillance along the line of actual control with China as the Chinese army's activities have increased marginally in depth areas. Indian Army Chief General M M Narawne visited forward areas along the de facto border line of control in northern Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday and reviewed the ground situation and the ongoing counter infiltration operations in the union territory. Narawne's two-day visit comes at a time when there has been a slew of encounters in which several terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based outfits have been neutralized and at least 9 security personnel have lost their lives. Operations have also been intensified across Kashmir Valley after around a dozen civilians have been killed by terrorists in the region this month. Meanwhile, Lieutenant General Manoj Pandey, Chief of Army's Eastern Command, said on Tuesday the army has also increased surveillance along the LSC, the line of actual control, as the Chinese army's activities have increased marginally in depth areas. Both sides are attempting to develop infrastructure closer to the LSC, which leads to certain issues at times. the official said say we have adequate forces that are available in each sector to deal with any contingency that may arise and we are also practicing and rehearsing on various contingencies that may come about this comes after the 13th round of talks between indian and chinese military commanders to resolve a protracted standoff in eastern ladakh broke down this month with both sides blaming each other for the failure to make progress floods triggered by heavy rains wreaked havoc in parts of india's northern uttarakhand and southern kerala states on tuesday leaving behind a trail of destruction and affecting normal life over 2 dozen people have lost their lives in both the states while operations have continued to rescue the stranded Floods triggered by heavy rainfall wreaked havoc in parts of India's northern Uttarakhand state on Tuesday, inundating several areas, damaging infrastructure and affecting normal life. More than 20 people have lost their lives due to the incessant rain, cloud burst and flooding in the state in the past 2 days, authorities said. Video footage showed streets of Nainital city inundated as rescue operations continued. India Meteorological Department has issued a red alert for Uttarakhand with a forecast of heavy to very heavy rainfall to continue in the state for the next few days. Uttarakhand State Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dami conducted an aerial survey and held a review meeting and assured of all possible help. Abhi yatra na kare kisano ka bhi bahut nuksan hua hai uske abhi hum aakalan kar rahe hain hamari koshish hai is aapda ki ghadi mein sabhi log थोड़ा संयम बरतेंगे तो निश्चित रूप से मौसम विभाग ने कहा है कि आज देर रात्रि तक मौसम ठीक हो जाएगा तो स्थिति हमारी सब सामान्य हो जाएगी इन इंडिया सदर्न केरला स्टेट हैवी टोरेंशियल रेन सिंस द पास्ट वीकेंड हैव कॉज रिवर्स टू ओवरफ्लो एंड हैव लेफ्ट बिहाइंड अ ट्रेल ऑफ डिस्ट्रक्शन इन द रीजन मोर देन 25 पीपल हैव बीन किल्ड इन फ्लड्स इन द कोस्टल स्टेट एंड सेवरल मोर आर फियर्ड मिसिंग मीनवाइल अथॉरिटीज हैव ओपनड अ नंबर ऑफ डैम्स टू रिड्यूस द रिस्क ऑफ डेंजरस ओवरफ्लोस In news from Pakistan, 
Pakistan's Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry has criticized the opposition parties for announcing anti-government protest over inflation and said merely lashing out at Prime Minister Imran Khan will not get them anywhere. The multi-party opposition alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement has said it would lead a campaign from October 20 over the unprecedented rise in inflation in the country that has gnashed people's right to live. Pakistan's Information Minister Fawar Chaudhry on Monday criticized the opposition parties and said they have announced anti-government protest over inflation just for the sake of it and merely lashing out at the Prime Minister will not get the opposition parties anywhere, he said. Fawad said there are no proponents of democracy in opposition as they are always looking to strike political deals. He stated the world is grappling with inflation and Pakistan is no exception and challenged the opposition to come up with an alternative solution to curb the rising inflation. This came after Maulana Fazlu Rahman, the president of PDM, the Pakistan Democratic Movement, announced that the multi-party opposition alliance would launch a campaign from October 28 against the unprecedented rise in inflation in the country. Rehman said that incompetent rulers have ruined Pakistan's economy and have left people in the lurch. Earlier in the day, leader of the opposition in the National Assembly, Shehbaz Sharif, also said the PTI-led government has snatched people's right to live as he lashed out at it over its policies and the rising inflation. Moving on, U.S. Special Envoy for Afghanistan, Zalmi Khalilzad, is stepping down and will be replaced by his deputy, Tom West, the U.S. State Department has said. The move comes less than two months after the chaotic U.S. withdrawal and the subsequent Taliban takeover of Afghanistan. Top U.S. envoy to Afghanistan, Zalme Khalilzad, is stepping down and will be replaced by his deputy, Tom West, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said in a statement on Monday, less than two months after the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, and the Taliban takeover of the country. Khalilzad, born in Afghanistan, held the post since 2018 and spearheaded the negotiations with the Taliban that led to the February 2020 agreement for the withdrawal of U.S. forces this year. He then pressed the hardline Islamist movement and the Western-backed government of former Afghan President Ashraf Ghani to negotiate a political settlement to decades of strife. In mid-August, the government collapsed as the Taliban swept through the country and marched into the capital, Kabul, unopposed. Khalilzad was left seeking the group's assistance in the U.S. evacuation of U.S. citizens and at-risk Afghans who worked for the U.S. government. His departure follows his exclusion from the Biden administration's first formal talks with the Taliban after the U.S. pullout held in Doha earlier in October. It's more than two months since the Taliban took control of the country that is already struggling with drought and severe poverty after decades of war. Residents in capital Kabul lament about loss of income and lower quality of life under Taliban rule. More than two months since the Taliban took control of Afghanistan, residents in capital Kabul lamented on Monday about loss of income and lower quality of life. The Taliban seized control of Kabul on August 15 and announced a new government last month after US-led foreign forces withdrew and the Western-backed government collapsed. Residents said life under the previous government was not without its challenges but was still better than what it is today. قبلا کاربار خوب بود مقصد حکومت اسلامی امارات که آمده کاربار دیگه بیخی کتی سفر ظرف شده بذار کاربار نیست سابق که بود خوب بود بد نبود کاربار بود مقصد یا که آمده این دیگه ولی امنیت از نگاه امنیت خوب است مگرم کاربار بیخی دیگه کتی سفر ظرف شده بذار کاربار مردم بچه جانم فامیدی عرقم و بازم خوب بود اگر مشکلات داشتم بازم خوب بود اولادای ما فهمیدید این پیراداری تا بالا پایاشون اولا میکه بازم خوب بود خو اینال میبینم خدا و راستی ریاکتا میگفت جرنال 
Facing an economic crisis as winter approaches, Taliban officials have urged Western governments to resume aid donations and called on the United States to lift a block on more than 9 billion US dollars of Afghan central bank reserves held overseas. Many countries have refused to recognize the Taliban, who until recently were a jihadist insurgency fighting foreign troops and their Afghan allies. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Bangladeshi police said on Tuesday that 450 people had been arrested in the Muslim-majority nation after attacks against Hindus in some of the worst such unrest for over a decade. At least six people have died, local media reported, as police have fought to restrain angry mobs. The violence began last week when hundreds of Muslims protested in the southeastern Naukali district, accusing Hindus of a blasphemous incident involving Quran, religious text of Islam. Several Hindu religious sites have been vandalized and homes attacked. Authorities have filed 71 cases in connection with the violence during the Hindu festival of Durga Puja, a Bangladesh police spokesman said. Meanwhile, members of a Hindu group, the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, on Tuesday held protests in India's eastern Kolkata city condemning the attacks on minority Hindus in Bangladesh. Protesters demanded Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina government to provide protection to Hindus immediately. Communal tensions have long simmered in Bangladesh, whose constitution designates Islam as the state religion, but also upholds the principle of secularism. The unrest is among the worst in Bangladesh since Hasina's Awami League party came to power in 2009. Rights group Amnesty International called for an investigation and punishment for perpetrators. बांग्लादेश में यहां पर जो दुर्गा पूजा के बाद से एक मतलब हिंदू के ऊपर पूरा जेनोसाइड चल रहा है हिंदुओं का मोट मंदिर तोड़ा जा रहा है पंडल को आगजनी किया जा रहा है मारा जा रहा है तो इसके खिलाफ हम लोग विश्व हिंदू परिषद गोटा बंगाल में पूरे बंगाल में एक एजिटेशन कर रहे सब जिले में चल रहा है और यहां पर कोलकाता में भी ये हम ऑर्गेनाइज किए हैं और हम लोग ये कहना चाहते हैं शेख हसीना सरकार को कि the tourism sector in India's Jammu and Kashmir was badly hit by the pandemic and faced huge losses. However, the influx of tourists in the region has started rising gradually, with relaxations in the COVID-19 norms. People from across the country are heading to the Union territory for a leisurely experience. The influx of tourists in India's Jammu and Kashmir has started rising gradually months after the tourism sector came to a halt following the COVID-19 pandemic that hit the country last year. Travel operators and people associated with the tourism industry are feeling relaxed as the tourist influx has increased in Srinagar, the capital city of Jammu and Kashmir, after a dip in the COVID-19 cases in the country. With relaxations in the COVID-19 norms, people from across the country are heading to the Union Territory for the leisurely experience. In the past 10 days, there is a very good change in the looking at. There is a gradual increase. Our daily needs are increasing, whether it is by air or by surface. So, it seems that the tourism is coming in the days over the past few days, several civilians have been killed by terrorists in the territory, sparking fear in the valley. However, this hasn't deterred the tourists from heading to the valley. As I heard, it was a very dark type. But here, it doesn't feel like anything. Here, it feels very relaxed. It feels good. Here, the people are very good. Here, the places are very good. Here, the places are very good. Tourism in Jammu and Kashmir serves as an economic backbone to the Union territory. The sector was badly hit by the pandemic and faced huge losses. However, several measures were taken up by the authorities to curb the infection. The Kashmir Valley is a popular destination among tourists from across the world, which is drawn to its Himalayan summits and tracks along with picturesque valleys and lakes. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.